I die? Well, some folks like horses and cats or dogs. Me, I like fishing with a rod and fly. Yes, fishing is a favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Well, life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Spring has thawed out the long, bitter winter. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Delaware River. Might even catch and release one or two. Stoneflies and caddis in the ripples are plenty. Mayflies according on fragrant breeze. The cedar wax wings come down from the heavens. Wait for their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddies. I make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I feel so much better. And if he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. The water is cold and my waders leap. It's raining now on my favorite stream. I'll bear it all just to fish with a feather. So when I sleep, I will have a sweet dream. Life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the dry fly. The sun is shining down on the valley, hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Yes, I hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. In the springtime, I go to the stream. Oh, hey folks, how you doing? Kurt Nelson here for Riffles and Waves. Today, we're going to do our first dry fly. Now, last, last week, we did the, a nymph, a hare's ear nymph. Now, you're probably wondering what's the difference between a wet fly or a dry fly or a nymph. Well, basically, nymphs and wet flies are underwater life phases of the insects or the aquatic foods that trout feed on okay so you may have a wet fly that looks like a quill gordon okay it's a mayfly nymph that ascends to the surface and then hatches as a flying insect and you may have a wet fly that could be called a streamer they're wet flies also Nymphs are primarily the nymphal stage of the aquatic insects. It could be stoneflies, dragonflies, mosquito larvae, um, caddis, and mayflies. And there's probably other, other things out there too. Now, today we're going to do a red quill. Now, red quill is a pretty, one of my favorites, okay? So it's a pretty good fly to have in your fly box. And we're gonna, there's two ways to tie it. One way is to use a quill from a peacock feather, and you strip the fuzz off of that, and use the quill and wrap it around the fly hook. Another way is to take a hackle <coughs> cape, okay? This is a rooster cape, and these are what are used to tie dry flies. Last week, or two weeks ago, when I talked about dry fly materials. I don't think I covered hackle. Uh, I meant to, but I don't think I did. Now, this is a grizzly neck. This is a, um, a, a, a what do you call it? A red. Uh, but there's an, a Rhode Island red type rooster 
cape, okay, and they've genetically been engineered to provide over hundreds of years, they've been breeding these roosters to provide better quality hackle. And I've got a large selection of hackle that could be used for tying dry flies. I got a whole box here. Now, you got to realize too that one of these packages is $50. And I've got over 20, 20 $50 pieces. Here's a black one. And uh, for the red quill, we're going to be using uh, pretty much a red, a red hackle. Here's another red. Really long. This is a Collins, Collins hackle farm. Okay, and uh, we may we may use one from there. But uh, anyway, and another way to tie the red quill is to use a grizzly brown or red hackle tied together. It makes a, a little lighter colored red quill, but it still to me qualifies as a red quill. Now, all we're going to do, it's a very simple fly to tie, and what we're going to do is take this, this uh, hackle and pull some of the fibers off of it and hold them together and that will make the tail. Okay, so that would be the little tail fibers. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a cold. And then I'm, we're going to strip all the fibers off of that and tie it on with the hook with the tip and as we wrap it forward it will make a nice tapered segmented body that looks like a mayfly okay that's what this fly will imitate and then we're gonna put just a little bit of this lemon wood duck flank uh, these are really good for making wings they're kinda of barred looking and we're gonna cut out a little piece of that we're going to put a little wing on there, okay? For this fly, we, we aren't going to tie split wing. That's a little more complicated. But we may just put a little wing on there just to, just to add that look, okay? And that's pretty much it. So, um, I'm thinking we should uh, get right into it. Now, again, you don't have to have a lot of these hackles, whole necks. Um, Dick's and other stores... Uh, around the area sell little packages of hackle and uh, it can be rather expensive but good quality hackle makes nice flies that float very well for when you go fishing on the stream okay so let me put my coffee somewhere I don't know where to put it let me move this hackle here and let's uh, close this and I'll set my coffee right there, okay? So, <clears throat> let's get started with the red quill. Okay, as I said, we're going to use some hackle here. And these are nice, nice long hackles. So, let's take one of these uh, fairly reddish colored the ones with the reddish quill in the middle. Okay, we're going to pull that right out of there. Okay, so here's our fiber. Okay. There's one. Here's another one. Now we're going to use this to wrap on the hackle um, for our red quill. We're going to use this one for the tail. We're going to use some little fibers out of there for the tail. And then we're going to use the quill section, which is the center portion of a, a feather, to wrap as the body and let's put a hook in there I think I have a size 12 and that's kind of big for these dry flies and it's kind of big for these dry flies but I think it'll work uh, good so you can see it okay again I tie these in size 14 all the way down now you probably should put a red thread in your in your bobbin. I use olive, um, pretty standard, and uh, for me. And we're gonna wrap all the way back and put the tail on. Now some folks recommend putting the wing on first. Okay, and I don't like that. 
<clears throat> technique. I never found it beneficial to me, and it, I always found that wing gets in the way while you're tying. Now, but there's it doesn't mean you can't do that. Okay. Now we're gonna pull some of those fibers out. This is for the tail, and we got some of those fibers right there. We're gonna use the pinch method again. And we're going to clip some of the ends off of that so that's nice and even. But what we're going to do is hold that on there. We're going to pull the thread up through the fingers and down through loose. And then we're going to pull up tight. Then down through loose and then up tight. That prevents it from spinning and going all over the place. Now if you pull on the downstroke, it'll cause it to spin a little. Okay? So we have our tail on there. Nice little tail right there on that fly. Now we're going to strip all the fibers out of here. And if you're inclined to save these, because you can for other tails, but I don't usually do that. I have so many feathers that it doesn't matter to me. So now we're going to get to this point right here. Now what I want you to do is clip this off right about where they ended okay so that there's a little tag piece on there okay little little tag piece of fibers on there and when you tie that on that will help hold it and I don't have a problem with putting that whole piece on there because it helps bulk up the body a little bit okay now we're gonna wrap forward Okay, so we have our hackle on here. Okay, and we're simply going to start wrapping this quill around the body of the fly on the hook. We're just going to keep wrapping in progression going forward to the eye of the hook. And we're just using a simple wrapping motion each time we progressively move up the hook and it makes a nice tapered segmented body with rib with a rib automatically there just by the way the color of the quill goes on and you can tie a real nice uh, mosquito by using either a grizzly quill or using uh, a moose moose fibers <clears throat> moose hide fibers and use a black one and a white one together and you wrap those together and bring them forward and it makes the same kind of body and it's white and black like a mosquito okay now we have our nice little segmented body there and we have our hackle here and for this fly we're going to use one hackle a lot of times I use two <coughs> and when you're doing a, um, a dry fly what I like to do is is clip off the material on the feather so that you have little little nubbies to help hold it on there okay and we're just gonna wrap that in there and again your proportion would be about three quarters of the way up the shank is where you want your your hackle to start and then we're gonna put in a little piece of wing now we're going to take this lemon wood duck and the trick here is to cut out the center quill <coughs> okay now we're gonna pinch those tips together and then we're gonna cut that out and we're gonna measure that to be about the length of the shank we're going to cut the ends here. So you want your, your wing to be about the length of the shank. We're going to go around loose and do the pinch method again. We're going to wrap all the way forward and then back to the feather. Now it's sticking backwards, okay? Now see, that's why some people tie them on first because they want their wings to stand up. But what I do is I pull the wings forward and then wrap behind it. have to excuse me I got a nasty cold here and once you wrap behind it 
a few times those feathers will stand pretty much straight up and forward a little bit and again when we wrap the hackle I like to wrap the hackle forward so that it puts a little pressure on the uh, I'm gonna do a half hitch here with my bodkin just so the line doesn't come out <coughs> now we'll take our little hackle pliers and clamp them on to the fly or the uh, I mean the the hackle our red hackle and we're gonna wrap that forward now there's a couple of different techniques here there's two different sides to this feather okay and some folks like it one way and other folks like it the other way at this stage I don't want you to worry about it all I want you to do is wrap that hackle forward making some nice little legs so that fly will stand right on the water okay don't get caught up in too much technique here now see how that wings going forward now we're gonna go in front of the wing and do a couple more wraps and our wings are gonna stand right up straight I'm gonna wrap as much as we can out of that hackle without crowding the eye and wrap right around there nice and tight pull that out of the way it's like doing surgery here I like to think that if you can tie flies you could have been a surgeon and the only problem is my eyes are so bad nowadays and what I like to do before the it falls apart is I like to get one half hitch on there if I can before the feathers come loose okay maybe another one <clears throat> then I'm gonna do my little whip finish where I wrap around twice and then bring the line around and pull it right up nice and tight and that's my whip finish and we're gonna take a little drop of head cement which I didn't use last week and each week I like to bring something new in here now with head cement you can use nail polish it doesn't have to be uh, Orvis or anybody else's head cement nail polish will work fine and so if your mom has some or your sister has some go ask her if you can borrow it if it's your sisters just take it but if your if it's your mom's you don't want to steal from your mom and there we go we have a nice little red quill dry fly which is very good in the spring and uh, in early summer it's a very good dry fly to use on any streams around here it floats nice and the fish just love it so there you go folks we we tied our red quill this week and I hope you in, enjoyed this quick little lesson on tying dry flies if you have any questions or comments email me at avkurt at mac.com and uh, <clears throat> I, I have some hats on order and what I would like to do right now is if you are the first person to email me at avkurt at mac.com I will send you you know you contact me and I'll let you know that you won and what we'll do is I'll get your address and I'll mail you out a Riffles and Waves hat. I don't have one here to show you, but it has my logo on it for Riffles and Waves. And what we'll do is uh, I'll send you out one. Uh, they're still right now being uh, printed up and, uh, and made over at Knucklehead Embroidery. They're doing it for me. And uh, I should have them uh, by the time you see this show. Um, I mean, my shows are all taped in advance but by the time you see the show I should have the hats here so 
be the first person to say that you saw me tie a red quill on TV and let me know who you are and all that stuff and I'll <coughs> I'll contact you and uh, let you know that you won the hat for this week and again throughout the whole series I hope to have some more hats to give away and some more toolkits for fly tying and stuff like that and so make sure you watch the show each week I have different giveaways coming I have uh, books on how to learn how to fly cast and fly fish the whole nine yards and and stuff like that f that I'm planning to be giving away here now uh, you don't need to buy anything to win or anything like that it's not a real contest it's just a way for me to make some contact with my viewers out there and I'd love to hear from you so if you have questions comments for the show I'd, I'd love to answer your email and write on on the television here and uh, uh, that would be a great way to uh, for us all to learn something new and uh, because if I don't know the answer I will find the answer and we will talk about it here on riffles and waves now uh, um, I guess that's it for this week so I'll see you later but keep on tying Let's have a look at that. What? Let's have a look at the fly collection. Here's something to help you get ready for trout season. Guaranteed to catch trout. Well, oh Kurt. Okay, Kurt. <laughs> it's Kurt. Mm. Guaranteed, okay. Makes the fish look bigger. <laughs> she left your hand out, it looked bigger before you put your hand in. <laughs> it's the back up so you can see it's a hand.
Back off of it with your hand. Get up in the morning at the break of dawn. Eat a good breakfast and then you're gone. Head to the river where the fishing is good. The place on the willow where Lee will have stood. Sit on a rock, put your waders on. Walk in the water while singing a song. Keep on fishing in the free world. Keep on fishing in the free world. Keep on fishing in the free world. That's in the shade Cast in the fly That I just made Get the ready with no lock there So try in the eddy with me flies there Cedar wax wings in the trees Feeding on mayflies on the breeze Keep on fishing in the free world. 